Hey there, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. Hi, Jack. Hi, Bajir. How are you today? Hanging in there. You know, it's uh, it's a year, but uh, I'm happy to talk with you, and I'm happy to take a look at a hand uh, which two of your students sent in, Eunice and Tomoko. Um, Jack, I took a look at this hand, and I'm puzzled about how to bid it. It's a wonderful hand, but we just need to make sure that um, we don't get left. Uh, well, here, let me just show you. Yeah, show me. That's a, Oh, that is a nice hand you've got there. So we've got 21 points, haven't we? Uh, uh, what are your thoughts about that hand, Bajir, apart from oh hell? Well, we're clearly, so sitting south, so we're clearly going to open. Um, and with a hand this strong, I guess my only question is, and hopefully other people, I wonder other people might have this as well. Do we just open, you know, bidding our spades or with our strength, um, would we want to bid two no trumps or even two clubs? Neither of those bids is perfect, but yeah. just opening one spade doesn't feel perfect. What are well, our actually, options? Help us out here. Well, the good news is, well, all bad news, if you look at it that way, is you are right. There's no perfect bid here because playing week twos, you can't open two spades to show 20 to 22 points anymore. So you have to do, you know, you have to do the best you can. Um, so really, some people might open two clubs. The problem with that, that's 23 plus. And, you know, it's not good enough to force to gain this hand. You know, there's too many losers there. So two clubs, it's not good enough for an upgrade. I mean, sometimes you can upgrade, but remember, two clubs is forcing to gain. So that one's out. I don't like to open two no trumps um, to show 2020 if I'm 5-4 in the majors. No, we'll often miss out on a major suit fit. So that's that's not ideal. Without uh, it being a balanced hand. Yeah, that. yeah, it's not ideal with 5-4 in the majors. I wouldn't mind it if I was 5-4 in the minors. Ah. Um, you know, to open two no traps slightly off centre. Mm. Uh, but yeah, to be honest with you, I would just open one spade. Now, what what are we at risk of being left in one spade? Um, well, you are at risk of being left in one spade. Uh, but remember, playing week twos, responders sh should bid with at least five points, not six. So you could mm. get left in one spade, but if you do, and partner's only got four points or less, you're probably not going to make game anyway. Then yeah. we'd be stuck in park yeah. score anyway. Yeah, and also the opposition might come into the rescue. They might bid clubs or diamonds to give you another bid. So in my experience, it's very rare to get left in one spade. So really with big hands, uh, most teachers will tell you to open at the one level. Yeah, and then and then proceed from there. So should we see how the bidding would go? Yes, yeah, please. So it's a one spade opener uh, by South. I'm, I'm squinting my eye to avoid looking at what East has, but I'm uh, interested to see. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. What, East what is kind of trap you're setting for us, Jack? <laughs> well, I'm in a mischievous mood. But no, North just bids two clubs, as they would. Yeah, 10 plus points. New suit at the two level. Uh, East, of course, has to pass. And South. What do you think, Bajir, about South? Would you, I mean, would you bid two hearts or would you bid three hearts there? I guess it comes back to the other question. Here, now we know we want to go to game, at the least. Yeah. Um, so if we were to bid two hearts, is there a chance that we could be left there? It's a, that's, a, that's the main point of this hand, I think. Well, apart from the one spade opener, which is difficult as well. But actually here, two hearts, and it's the title of this, uh, this video, is 100% forcing. Okay, we don't need to jump to three hearts to show our strength. Because the problem about jumping to three hearts, it takes away so much bidding space. You know, partner really has only got one or two bids they can make then. So when partner comes back with a new suit at the two level, promising 10 or more points like they are here, mm. chain suit by south is 100% forcing. And north can never pass. So we can keep the conversation going and we, we don't have to be worried about, let, you know, being left here. Correct. And... You know, I'm doing a couple of lessons on forcing and non-forcing bids coming up. You know, uh, next Monday will be the first one. It's going to be a very interesting lesson because many bridge players, even really experienced ones, you know, find it difficult. Which bid is 100% forcing? Which bid is forcing? What's not mm. forcing? Et cetera. What, what would a three-heart second bid communicate? Well, three it would just, well, it would describe your hand quite well. It would be what we call the jump shift. So it would show mm. 19 or more points and five spades and four hearts. So it does describe your hand well, 
But there's no point bidding three hearts if we can bid two hearts, which is 100% forcing. And it saves you so uh, much in space. Um, and by, by not bidding three hearts, it's not that we're denying that hand. No. We're just taking no. a slower route to have that conversation with partners. Correct. So this two heart bid could be a minimum of 12 points. It could be up to about 22 points. Yeah. Um, and it's not denying that higher end. No, it's definitely not denying that, you know, loads mm. of points. Um, mm. But the key thing is, over a change of suit at the two level, this is 100% forcing. Yeah, so we can be... Um, I mean, obviously, if you're playing with a, an inexperienced partner, you might have to jump to three hearts, you know, if you're a little bit worried that they might pass. But an experienced partner, and certainly one who's done some of my lessons, will know that this is 100% forcing. Fantastic. Okay, so that will send it back over to partner. Let's see. What would you bid as the north hand now? Here's putting on the spot. You've got 12 points. Okay, so sitting north. Well, what we know, we also know five, uh, that south hand partner sitting south uh, would have five and four now. Correct, we, five spades and four hearts. We don't have a fit. That's um, a good point. And we don't know how strong south is. No. But we know no we want to keep going and we have to bid. So I guess, I mean, would we, would we go straight? Great to three no trumps, or is there something else that we might want to learn about? Yes, well, I think what you said was right. We can't, some players would support the hearts here. No, to support hearts, we'd always need to have four cards for the fit. So as you as you rightly said, there's no fit. Um, you could go straight to three no trumps, but it's a bit of a sign off. Actually, your best bid here is a bit mm. that some people do forget. It's four suit forcing three diamonds. Mm. Yeah. Um, and whether you're playing four suit forcing or not, it's still a good bid. But if you're playing four suit forcing, which we did cover in one of my lessons a little while ago, um, this is 12 or more points. Uh, actually, nothing to do with diamonds. You might not have any diamonds, but it's asking partner for more information. And that, that important word in there is forcing. So it keeps that conversation going. 100% forcing, uh, four suit forcing, forcing to game. It's a very useful little convention uh, because it means that neither side now can stop short of game. You know, and you can take the bidding nice and slowly, knowing that you're going to, you know, be in game as a minimum. And important for South, it's a minimum of 12 points? Correct. Always 12 or more points, yes. And that's important for South. Well, what do you think about the South hand now, Bajir? You know, I just counted South points again. And uh, if we have 21 sitting South, and now we know that partner has 12, that puts us at 33, which... Um, that's when you start rubbing your hands together and <laughs> pointing at the fences if uh, things break in your favor. That's right. And and if you've been watching a few of my lessons. I think you might remember that I call I call thirty three points or more the magic number. The uh, magic number. I, I do. So there, are you sitting comfortably there? I am. What are you going to do? To, oh boy, there it is. There it is. <laughs> There's the big one. You know, let's not muck around anymore. Uh, if you've got 12 points and I've got 21, we've got 33, <coughs> which is the magic number for six no trumps. I think that's a very difficult hand to bid. Mm. Uh, and I think at the table, if you ended up in six no trumps, you've actually bid the hand very well um, because it is a tricky one to bid. Ah, gosh, what a beautiful hand. What a beautiful auction. Thanks for stepping us through that. Now, uh, can we play it? Can you uh, help yeah, it's quite a reasonably tricky hand to play. So it's a very instructive hand to play. So let's play it out. So we'd lead the fourth highest diamond here. You know, that's effectively the unbid suit of three diamonds with four suit forcing. So the opponents haven't shown diamonds naturally. So diamond lead. And one thing we must always do in no trumps, of course, is count our certain tricks before we do anything. Mm. So let's count them up, shall we? We've got four hearts, uh, three in spades, that's seven. Ace King of Clubs, which is nine, and the Ace King of Diamonds making eleven. Can you see, Vajir, a way to a twelfth trick? Let's put you on the spot. We've got eleven. Can you see a way, maybe, for a twelfth? Well, trick? We, first thing I always need to remind myself when we're playing no trumps is uh, don't look to rough anything. There's nothing like playing online. The disappointment of trying to rough something and just go, <laughs> I forgot uh, the no trump contract that we're in. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at that spade suit and I'm thinking we have to be able to get 
Well, let's see. There's only that singleton. What else? Yes, but try not to look at the east-west cards. But if okay, you look, okay. Yeah, I know it's difficult. But if you're just looking at north-south, you are right. The spade suit, we've actually got six between us, haven't we? Yeah. And, so and if they, yeah, if they divide evenly, and I'm not looking at east spades at the moment, I'm saying to myself, if they divide four and three, mm. we are going to be able to make a length winner in spades. So effectively, we are allowed to lose one trick. So we're going mm. to lose one to gain one with our fifth spade. So that would be my course of action. So that would be my main thing that I'm going to go for, the spades. Mm. If I get bad news there, I've got a second chance with the clubs. Because if the clubs divide 3-3, three, three, then there's a chance that we can make an extra trick in clubs. Right. And while we have three sure winners in spades, the club suit is actually our best suit. It is, and but... It is, but the only problem is it is more likely to divide 4-2, the clubs. But you're right, it is It is mm. our longest suit, isn't it? We've got seven between us. Mm. Uh, but I think what we need to do first is try the spades. Okay. Should we do that? Let's do it. Second player play low, third player play high. Win with the A. So like any no-trump contract, we're going to go for the extras first. So everyone follows. So we come back to hand with a heart the queen and now we play the king of spades and we get the bad news look at that right there that's pretty unlucky isn't it yes and spades so this is where uh Sal declare is going to have to realize okay i need to change my uh change my plan entirely right if we plug on and we mustn't play the queen of spades either that would be a massive mistake if we played the queen of spades now when the opponents next get in they might well cash their jack of spades and defeat us. So keep the queen of spades. There's no rush to play it. So the queen has become our stopper, knowing correct. that we're now vulnerable to East long spade suit. Correct. So the spades aren't going to give us any honey. So we now have that second chance of clubs. Well, we had seven between us, and the opponents had six. So if the clubs divide 3-3, three, three, again, that's going to give us a length winner or two. So let's try the club. So king of clubs first. Okay. The higher card from the shorter holding, of course, not the eight, always the king. Everyone follows. Now we play a second club. And good technique to duck this one. You know, if are going to lose a trick, lose it early. So duck that club just to retain communication. Now the opponents would continue with diamonds, as they did. And this is the moment of truth. Are the mm. clubs going to divide 3-3? Three, three? <laughs> so there's the Can we get the remaining two? Exactly. And luckily, we see we do, which makes our 10 a nice Correct. short win. So fortunately for us, on our second chance with the clubs, they have divided 3-3. Three, three. The 10 is a master. So mm. let's play it out now. Losing spade can go away. And we'll just play out these last few tricks. We've got a little bit of time, but they are the rest are now ours. So King of Hearts, Ace is a winner, and of course the Queen of Spades is a winner from before. So actually, Bajir, when the dust settled, we did make a rather tricky six no trumps. Oh, what a what a beautiful hand! It's interesting, mm. isn't it? Such an interesting hand that uh, Eunice and Tomoko sent in. Oh, um, thank you guys for sending this in. Where did they encounter it? Were they playing online? I, I, I suppose we're all playing online these days. This would be one of their online games on BBO, yes. Okay. And uh, they've been very much enjoying the classes. Um, uh, so um, <laughs> they're really interesting. I mean, interesting in the bidding uh, and in the play as well. Mm, gosh. Well, thank you for sharing that. Thanks for stepping us through that. Um, a quick plug uh, to anyone watching. Uh, Jack's online classes, uh, you'd be most welcome. Come to learnbridgeonline.com forward slash Jack Bash Stockin uh, every Monday. And um, yeah, you can see, you get to learn from the master. Jack, thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thanks, everyone. I'm always happy to help out on these hands. And um, as I say, really looking forward to some new classes on forcing and non-forcing. And uh, classes are going to go throughout the winter. So uh, plenty to look forward to. And uh, yeah, happy to help out. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.